down. Hey Robot Makers, how you doing? I hope you're having a good day so far. So, do you want to know all about the Pimeroni trialer bot for the Raspberry Pi 4? It's an amazing little bot. So let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. So let's get down to it, shall we? So yes, this is all about the Raspberry Pi 4 trialer bot by Pimeroni, who are also based in Sheffield. We were just discussing Sheffield in the pre-show warm-up there. So yes, uh, session goals for today. We're going to have a look at the trial bot. We're going to have a look at some of the features, what's in the box, the price, the documentation, the build quality, some of the software libraries, and we'll have a demo of them too. And we'll also have a look at Pimeroni themselves as a company. So a quick look at the features. So this is described by Pimeroni as a mid-level robot. And we'll have a look at what the different levels of robot could be. Um, because they haven't provided any context with this themselves, uh, but I would go with that. So this is a photograph of my little bot that I've got next to me there. So it has four tactile buttons on it with an LED light b beside each one that you can programmatically turn on or off. So you can program them however you like. There is a front-facing ultrasonic sensor, the rangefinder that we love in the SMARS and the Auto DIY. And also above that, there is the place for a Raspberry Pi camera, the official camera. So I put the camera in my model. I've got that all wired up to the Raspberry Pi 4 that's in there too. So that means we can do some really, really cool things with it. It's in exactly the right place on the robot. Um, it has some hackable headers for expansion. There is some servo headers. There's uh, five by headers for mounting the breakout gardens. We'll have a look at these breakout garden things as well, these little connectors that enable us to plug in I2C and SPI devices really easily. Um, and they, they're sold separately, but I bought the, the five pack for mine. And it also has six RGB LEDs underneath, which is uh, just rave-tastic, isn't it, really? So you can change the colours for them, you can do all kinds of stuff. So we're going to have some fun with that too. I've not seen that before on a kit robot, so I'm quite excited underneath, that is. They usually have them on the top. It also has uh, two um, quick uh, Stemma QT connectors as well. Um, they're quite popular on quite a few boards. I know Adafruit, uh, all their feathers and things like that, they use these quite a bit as well. And uh, there is loads of schematic technical drawings and a really, really good Python library as well. So it does have uh, two front wheel drive, um, really nice tires on it and a rear caster as well. It's quite a common model for this kind of robot. So what's in the box? So they provide this really nice picture on their website that I've just quickly stolen there. <laughs> Hopefully don't get a copyright strike for that. Uh, so the, the trailer by itself has the main board. That's the, the board you can see. Um, let me just get my cursor around about here. And it also has the, the top, which is this one here. There is a front camera board. Um, well, sorry, that's the rangefinder board and there is also a camera board there and they sort of slot together and then the, the top board goes into place. There is also two motor cables. So these are the uh, N20 motors that we normally have in our SMARS robots, uh, but they put a little connection on there and uh, there's a little cable that's just the perfect length. Uh, so what you would do is you put the, the motors here and here on the design and then the little cable just pops out into these little connectors here and here so it's really simple to uh, to get that up and running and they picked an interesting speed of motor as well so these are 110 to 1 motors um, so you can usually get these in all kinds of different sizes speeds rpm i've tried the 150 rpm they're usually quite a good speed but they've gone for a slightly slower more torque uh, and it's it's a good speed we'll have a play with that in a second They've also got some grippy moon buggy wheels. They are really cool wheels. Um, definitely uh, an improvement over some of the other kits I purchased in the past. We'll have a quick review of those as well. And uh, it has the ball caster as well. It's a really good quality um, ball caster. So there's no problems mobility wise there whatsoever. I would call it carpet proof. Uh, and I have quite a thick carpet for soundproofing. Um, the ultrasonic sensor is our good old friend. The, uh, is it the HCSR04? Sure, I've got those letters right around there, um, which is the, the five volt uh, ultrasonic range finder. Very easy to program. And they've got a connector built straight into the board. So you just push that in and it's held in place by those other uh, boards. So really nice uh, engineering there. There's a booster header as well for attaching your Pi. So along here, there is a connector, the sort of 40 pin uh, already built into the board. And there's a little expansion uh, header, a booster header, they call it, that just fits between the Raspberry Pi 4 and the board. Now they say Raspberry Pi 4, um, anything that's got the 40 pins in it, you could put in place. So I think the Raspberry Pi 2 upwards would be compatible, but really you want the most powerful that you can get if you can get hold of them. <laughs> That's one of the challenges right now. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Zeros are back in stock. I see quite a few places, Raspberry Pi Zero 2. 
Um, there's also a USB-C power cable. That's this one at the top. That's really nicely designed. So the, the power from the uh, Raspberry Pi 4, the connector is there. And then if you have the battery, like I do on my overhead, I'll show you in a second. Um, it's the perfect length for just plugging it into a battery pack as well, um, which isn't included. And then there's also the nuts and bolts and all that kind of stuff for putting it together. So really nice kit. You've even got... Um, there's a sticker to enable you to stick your battery pack and I'll show you, share you a, a small story about that as well. And there's also these um, Velcro cables as well for sort of attaching it to the, uh, the, the battery pack so it doesn't fall off. Okay, so what's not in the box? So you don't get a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, at least they're not bundling it with one as part of a kit at the moment. Uh, and I've said you probably use a Raspberry Pi 2 and upwards. Um, you don't get the Raspberry Pi camera, the version 2 camera. Um, you don't get an SD card either, uh, or the USB battery pack as well. So you've got to bring those uh, along to the party if you want to play. Okay, but apart from that, so price-wise, it's £48 UK or $65 US plus shipping. Um, and this isn't a sponsored event, by the way. This isn't me uh, being sponsored. This is just something I bought with my own cash, with my own Christmas money. <laughs> Uh, they describe that as a mid-level robot as well. So if you like what I do and you want to help me out, um, support the show, um, give this video a like, whatever platform you're on, give it a comment as well. Let me know if, you've, uh, if you're interested in robot kits, if you've got any kits yourself, be interested to know which kits you have. And also hit the little subscribe button so that you, uh, you don't miss out on one of the, the new shows. Okay, so documentation wise, they have done a fantastic job. This is one of the things that makes it worth the £48, I would say, is they put so much love and attention into the documentation. So they've got a whole documentation site, um, what you need, preparation, you can see their assembly, really clear instructions, um, and they've got loads of step-by-step -step stuff as well. So I really like the, the level of detail and the care that they put into this. So uh, Chris Parrott there, who's done the documentation, fantastic job on that. Um, really think that's... Uh, up to scratch. Bill quality wise uh, and value for money so I've done a bit of a pros and cons thing here uh, and they're not really cons this is just me nitpicking I think but um, you've got to balance it out so the tires have got a really good grip um, out of all the robots that I built the little moon um, buggy wheels as they describe it with the little bumps on it really really good quality uh, can move on hard surfaces as well as on through carpet as well so no problems there. The motors are just the right power so good mix between the torque of the motors uh, and the speed of the motors as well and the accuracy they it can sort of stop on a dime um, so pleased with that these little GST connectors that they have a really solid fit so plugging the um, the motors into the motherboard uh, you know you're not worried about that sort of coming out or shaking loose or anything like that so other kits where you have like just a regular DuPont cable plugging into a header um, they can come out and they can sometimes get little bad connections as they oxidize this is just a really good fit so good good choice there I see the PCB board is really solid as well it's a good thickness um, I'm just looking at it now uh, I'll measure it it's probably just about half a well I would say about five mil half a centimeter Let's measure it. Let's actually see. So I've got my digital calipers here. I'm just going to quickly uh, have a look and see what this actually is. So let me just make sure that's zeroed out. Exciting stuff. It's about two mil. It's about two millimeters thick. So um, whatever that is, it's uh, pretty sturdy as as things go. Um, Documentation wise, um, really, we just had a quick look at that, but it's quite in depth. There is um, there is example code that we will try out in a minute. Um, really high quality, spell checked and so on. And I'll give you an example of uh, really bad documentation. So I bought a kit for another robot, um, which I'll, I've got just behind me on the uh, the desk over here. Uh, and we'll do a bit of a side by side comparison. This was described as the uh, ZK2 and it's got a printed page I mean that means it's immediately out of date and they can't correct any mistakes that they have on there much better just to give a URL I would say and it's kind of um, in really bad English um, so whoever did the translation of this probably just heavily used Google Translate and it doesn't come across very well they have got some nice little diagrams of, of how to put the thing together um, but some things they just kind of skip over and you're thinking i can't see on the diagram what they've done there and the english is so poor and then that's it there's no software library or anything with that one so that's an example of bad documentation really basic what they have on here is just like really superior 
Um, the mounting points for the Pi where it fits into the, the motherboard, that's a really good fit. There's no wobble or anything there. Generally a very solid construction. So there are all the pros. On the cons side, I would say it does seem a little bit pricey. Um, so when you, you're putting your money down, £48, £50, it's, it's getting up there. It's not a cheap purchase for a hobbyist, um, considering you have to you know, bring your own Raspberry Pi, camera, battery, and all the rest of it. That will add to the overall price. Uh, but considering the documentation and code uh, that they provided and level of support, it's definitely well worth it. It's very good value for money, actually. So the fact you don't have a battery, and in the product documentation, they have pictures of this really nice battery pack on there, but you can't buy that from their website. So I was quite frustrated. I wanted the exact same battery pack that they used, uh, but they probably just had one that they had lying around. So I went on a buying spree and bought a couple of battery packs, but um, didn't buy one that was the perfect size. So this one's probably a little bit too big, um, but it does fit okay. Uh, and it certainly powered it for a couple of hours. I think it's a 10,000 10, milliwatt hour, well, milliwatt hour amp hour mah i think that's what i've got um so it yeah powers it for several hours um but that's not that doesn't come with it and they don't even give you a recommendation on which to buy just a, a usb c battery um the front i squared c breakout garden port is obscured by the rangefinder. so let me show you what i mean by that if i go to the overhead so over here we can see there is these these breakout garden ports so that's a breakout garden that's a breakout garden just there. And there's another another couple of them. There's one at the, the back there. And there's another one back there. I've actually put something in that one. And then there's a port at the very front there as well. And the issue is, if I try and put that in place, it just doesn't, it just doesn't fit. So I don't know if you can see there, it's kind of sticking out. It's not actually making a mechanical connection there. I think that's actually a bit of a design flaw. Uh, and the other thing about these, um, let me just move my microphone a little bit. One of the other things about these breakout garden ports, if I just show you what these things look like up close, um, I've actually snipped off there the four little plastic lugs which, which kind of go around it. Originally, I tried soldering them in place, if I just show you on here. And the idea is, is it completely flush underneath? Um, however, because these don't push through and don't have any sort of metal contacts sticking out the end, I can get a good shot of that. You know, they, they push through the board and have a little piece sticking out. Because they don't have that, it means you can't get a good mechanical connection for your soldering points. So although it might look really nice on a, you know, a flush thing, like they've got an example breakout garden here as a, as a, um, a, a hat that you can buy, when you're actually doing the soldering yourself, you want those pins to poke, poke, poke out very slightly through the bottom of the board so that you get a good mechanical connection. So I've just snipped off the four points of that. So I'll just put that back on there. So that's these breakout gardens. I don't know if you've seen these before. Um, I think they're quite unique to Pimeroni. They do these breakout gardens and they have two varieties. There's the smaller, there's the smaller pin version um, which is for I squared C and then there's the sort of larger one for SPI. It just means you can plug things in. So for example, I've got a, an OLED um, OLED um, display and it just fits in simply like that and everything lines up nicely. I'm not sure what happens if you put it in the wrong way around, but I guess they probably thought of that. So the breakout garden, four of them are perfect. I'll just say one of them is just needs to be soldered properly and just needs to be uh, thought out a little bit more. The battery sticker, <laughs> this is the story about the battery sticker, it's impossible to remove once you put it on. So if you happen to put your battery on and you've got OCD and it's ever so slightly off, it's that's where it's staying. That's where it will be forever. So yeah, that's just a little bit of a, a bugbear of mine. There is a camera, um, but the camera doesn't have any paired up with a microphone or a speaker so there's no sound output or input on this at all uh, so obviously the raspberry pi does have um, a sound output i'm not sure if it's a microphone input and output i've not actually looked at that uh, but there's no there's no built-in speaker there's no microphone and for the cost of the components it would be nice to i think have that on there as well because you could then use voice uh, dictation you could have sounds playback and so on and i think it's just a very small uh, misstep not to have that there and obviously there's no expansion points for things like LiDAR. So I have a LiDAR sensor. I'd like to stick that on the top, but there's no obvious way to do that. So if I go and grab my LiDAR 
my LiDAR sensor, you know, I want that to sort of stick on top like so. I just show you that sort of side on view. But there's no way to sort of mount that on there. There's no obvious mounting points. And uh, again, that'd be, be a nice thing to be able to add to it. But that's a no show. So a bit picking a little bit. It's a really great board. Um, I had to find some things wrong with it just to give it kind of more of a balanced review. So the software library is amazing. So they've done a really good job of creating some Python classes uh, to make programming this really straightforward. So you can see on the screen there, some of the things like turn left, turn right, stop, coast, which means like slow down to a stop. You can show the under lighting, you can set the, the values of them in RGB or HSW, HSV, sorry. Um, you can clear the under lights, you can read the distance from the range finder. You can do all the things with it very, very, very simply. So I'm really pleased with the uh, the level of detail that they've got into and how easy it is to do that. They also have a game controller. Now this is something I'm really interested in. So they've been able to make um, an Xbox, um, I think it's the Xbox One controller, the PS5 or 4 or 5 controller, and there's another one as well uh, listed in the documentation. So you can just pair that over Bluetooth and control your robot through the Python library. Really, really smart. You just de define which one of these uh, you want to use. So quite impressed with that. If you want to download the software library, just head over to github.com slash pymaroni slash trilobot dash Python, and you can grab the code and have a play with it. You can have a look at how they've done the, uh, uh, the, the um, Bluetooth Xbox remote as, as well. Very interested to use that on some of my robots. So the, the example code, they've got all kinds of example code provided. So there's an avoid walls using the range finder. You can calibrate the servos if you've got servos connected to it. You can, there's a thing called distance lights. We'll have a play with that one where it uses the range finder to change the value of the lights to make them change from sort of green to red, depending how close you are. You can fade the button uh, LEDs or flash the button LEDs, flash the under lights. You can make it follow straight. There was all kinds of movement, multiple button tests, print the distance from the rangefinder. And the ones I like are these underlight ones, so I'll have a good play with those as well. So we can look at the underlights, they sort of chase round, which is the uh, mode I've been playing with that in. And also um, underlight fade, where it sort of just fades like a, a night rider kind of display. Cool. And there's something called underlight groups, which is um, you can do like top, middle, bottom, diagonals and so on as well. Okay. So expansion wise, like I said, it has these five I squared C breakout sockets on board. Um, I've added to that and I've not been able to get them to just work just out of the box. I've, I've downloaded their uh, breakout garden code and really it's just um, I squared C library. Um, I've had a few problems getting that to work. That's probably more me than it is them. Um, but I bought two of these um, OLEDs. I actually had one. I didn't realize I had. And I also have the, the compass and gyroscope module as well so i've got that on the back of the device so i'll be able to sort of see which orientation it is in as well see if it's flipped over okay so um if you want to support the show um you can also go over to buymeacoffee.com slash kevin mcalear or if you want to do it join the youtube memberships i think they have a couple of different levels on there as well you can support the show just by clicking the join button uh, on the channel so that really helps pay for all the uh the expensive stuff that uh, it takes to run a show like this if you can find the right button then that's the one um so there is software that I use to stream out and I have to pay a monthly fee for. There's the royalty free music, so I don't get any copyright strikes and they're getting really, really good at that nowadays. Uh, the graphic software that I use, Canva, to do all the uh, thumbnails and so on, and all the equipment, all the different cameras, lights, uh, microphones and so on. So I really appreciate if you can uh, support the show. Okay, let's get back to our slides. So Pimeroni themselves, they're based in Sheffield uh, in the north of England north mid to east of England is it um, and Pimeroni I didn't realize this until I was doing some research um, a couple of months ago stands for pirate monkey robot ninja which is just the best acronym ever isn't it pirate monkey robot ninja Pimeroni sounds like an expensive Italian lager <laughs> and they say there it's, it's pronounced Pimeroni uh, and they were founded in uh, 2012, so actually not that old. Uh, and they've grown into one of the best manufacturers and suppliers of educational, industrial and hobbyist equipment in the UK and over 100 distrib distributors worldwide. So they're kind of the UK version of uh, Adafruit, I would say. 
So I love those guys, made in the UK as well. So we make all the cool stuff like Raspberry Pis <laughs> representing today. So how does this compare to some other kits? So I've got two kits on my bench that we can have a look at. So the first one is the Kittronics Move Mini Mark II buggy. Let's go and grab that. So this one is £28, so it's it's about two-thirds the price of the, uh, the Pimeroni Trilobot. And this one here, you can see it's quite chunky. It's quite thin, the wheels on it. The build quality is okay. Um, I would say the construction is fiddly. If this was for education, I think they would probably struggle with this, because I certainly did. And it's one of them, you know, it's plastic it, plastic holders with metal screws. So there's only so many times you can do that, and if you over-tighten it, that's it, you've ruined it. And one of the designs I really don't like is where they use uh, a metal bolt and then they have a bolt that goes through it and that metal bolt is held by the, the plastic. They essentially just strip um, if, if you, you over tighten it, just cracks the plastic. Um, so not amazing build quality, I would say, for, for the price of this. Awesome, we've got a super chat there. Thank you very much, uh, Neversync Makes. Really, really appreciate that. He says, uh, happy to support the show. Just discovered your channel and your videos and uh, re really been quite helpful. So thank you very much, uh, Neversync Makes. Really appreciate that. Okay, so um, yes, the motors are continuous servo motors. So if you've ever seen those blue uh, servo motors, they come in two varieties. You can just see them probably in there in that sort of tunnel there. And um, they come in... Um, ones which should just go from 0 to 180 or thereabouts and there's ones that are continuous. They're plastic so they only have so much power in them um, otherwise you start just grinding plastic and that's it. Unlike the Pimeroni Trilobot which is metal gears so you get a lot more power, a lot more reliability with those. The, this does have five LEDs on the front so um, you can do interesting little things with those but they're not in any they're just in an array next to each other it's not like it's downlit which is just uber cool and yeah like i said it's made of acrylic so pretty solid once it's built but if you drop it it probably will will, will break this one does have the uh the grabber thing on it i think they kind of went for a vector thing but it's it's a bit cheaper than that the battery they do have batteries in there um, and your micro bit goes in the front it's a micro bit robot Good quality documentation. The fact it has an on-off switch is really good. Our Pimeroni one doesn't have an on-off switch. Again, seems a bit of an odd thing to miss out on, on the thing there. You can just remove the power, but then your Raspberry Pi hasn't cleanly shut down. So it'd be good to have some kind of software button to uh, instigate uh, a shutdown. So that one is $28.80 um, or about $30, $40 thereabouts. So next up we have a really cheap generic robot car. Let me just grab this one to show you this. So you've probably seen these. My first robot was one of these. Um, I mean, I could have pulled off the uh, the thing there. There's just like a thing protecting the acrylic on there. So these start at around £15 to £25 I've seen on, um, on Amazon. You can probably get it a lot cheaper if you go to AliExpress and you wait a little while. It's about $20 to $34. You don't get a microcontroller. On this one, I've just put a... Um, uh, um, a motor shield and a Arduino and I've also put a rangefinder on there as well just to sort of show but there's nowhere for this to sort of nicely sit on there. Um, the motors are okay but they're those yellow plasticky ones so again they're okay the wheels on this are good quality wheels um, feel chunky definitely carpet proof you've got that caster on the back so it's not a nice ball bearing but it does the job for the price it's really good it does have an on off button as well which is really good and a battery pack and all the holes and everything that you need to um to get the wires to the right place um the motors that came with this came with a piece of cable uh, you know um plus and minus red and black cable but you would have to solder these yourself so i always think that that's a misstep it was the same with the uh with this move kit um, there was quite a few things on this that if you want to use this, for example, you have to start soldering things, um, soldering headers on so that you can plug these um, into into the board. And I thought that's a really crazy thing. If it's a kit designed for children and then you insist on them using soldering irons, you know, that's a whole nother skill they need to learn or the, the person who's teaching them needs to learn or has to do beforehand. Uh, this one doesn't have any LEDs. There's no mounting point for the rangefinder. So there's just like a big slot on the front. Um, so I kind of just 
held this in place with a bit of, I don't know, hot glue or something. Similar with that um, Arduino. Construction is very basic. It's very solid um, and it definitely works fine on carpet. It's got the battery on off box, uh, on off switch, which is really good. And the documentation, which I showed you earlier for this, it's basically no documentation at all. It just shows you how to put it together. There's no code, there's no supporting libraries. You basically just get the, uh, the platform to put things on. But as a starting point, it's okay. I think it's worth it for the, the wheels and the motors alone um, and the caster and the on off switch. Cool. So that's the um, the three robots sort of side by side. So let's have a look at those there. So definitely the uh, Pimeroni is the best bot you can buy. The um, Make Move is good. And then the, the platform is very, very basic. It's good for students, low cost of entry, but you need quite a lot of extra skills, I would say, to be able to add extra bits to this. Uh, the Move Kit is good, a starter kit, um, but not much scope for advancement. They do extra add-ons. Again, there's another add-on that I got, which was like a, a dumper truck thing, which is just a, I don't even know if I can show you this. There's a, inside there is a, a little servo. And again, you have to solder the header for the servo onto the thing, so. It's not amazing and the wheels are so close to the floor that you, you just it's not really carpet proof you've got to have it on a flat surface but obviously i would say the winner overall definitely is the Pimeroni um trial bot it's it's built for experts and beginners they call it a mid-range and it's a reasonable price really good build quality and the documentation is just second to none so that gets my my vote so some of the other things we can do with this. So this has got a camera on board and it's also got a Raspberry Pi 4, which is pretty powerful. We can do an awful lot of machine learning stuff with this. So in a couple of videos in the past, we've looked at open vision, we've looked at face detection, uh, we've looked at speech synthesis, voice recognition, all those really cool things. So we can put that onto this device just by downloading the Python code that we've already written. So I was thinking you could do face detection. So when you smile, um, it could make it go green underneath. When you frown, it could make it go red underneath. We could make it a bit more like a companion bot. Uh, maybe, you know, respond to various different hand gestures as well using some of the gesture libraries. So many cool things. So Rob was asking, does it come with Raspberry Pi 4? It doesn't. So the Raspberry Pi 4s start at around, is it £54, something like that? And then they go up in price to about 73 depending on the memory size. So I think that currently you can buy the 2 gig, 4 gig or 8 gig versions. Um, this is obviously compatible with ROS. You could run ROS on Ubuntu um, on the bot and you could do all the things that you can do in ROS on there as well. So... I think that's why it's it's definitely a mid-level robot. You can do so much more with it than just range finding. Okay, so just a reminder that I go live every single Sunday, 7 o'clock, same time, same back channel. And um, I've got an announcement to make. So we have set up our own Discord server for people like you who want to have a more fuller conversation about robots. Um, we do have the Small Robots Facebook group, uh, but you get quite a lot of spam in there. And I think Discord is a better kind of technology for getting close to people, having more in-depth conversations about things in a really structured way. So if you want to join our Discord server, um, just head over to action.smazfan.com slash join dash discord. So if you head over there, I'm actually in Discord in the room at the moment, uh, but nobody's in there yet. It's just me and Alex. So if you want to come and join that, um, that's brand new today. There's just a little sign up form when you go to that address and then it sends you the link um, by email just to make sure we've uh, validated whoever goes in there. So it is kind of an invite only through that link. Uh, and that little Kev's robot thing. Um, so I have quite a few different uh, brands that I use. I use Kev's robot, Kev's robot .com, um, which is where I'll be doing some pretty URLs in the future around these really long ones. Um, I have the uh, small robots group on on Facebook. Um, I have a company that's called Advice Factory, uh, but you all also just might know me as Kevin McAleer. So there's lots of different uh, brands and Smiles fan, obviously, as well. So Kev's Robots got a nice little makeover. We've got a little bot um, icon there. So that's what that's all about. So, yeah, if you want to join me on Discord, you can do. Uh, and we'll start adding people into that as the uh, requests come through. Okay, should we get over to a demo and have a play with this bot and see what it can do? So let me get myself uh, sorted on here. I just need to bring up um, Visual Studio. And I'm going to show you something else cool about Visual Studio that I've learned. 
Um, so if I bring that up and I go to this view here, let's just move that out of the way. There's a distraction. So this is entirely battery powered at the moment. It's not connected to anything, but um, I am remoted into it using um, Visual Studio. So there's a little extension on Visual Studio um, and the extension, if I can find it, um, allows you to remotely connect to things by SSH. Um, I'll see if I can find, I think, yes, yeah, remote SSH is what it's called. So if you, um, if you want to play along and do what I'm doing there, you just need to install on VS Code the remote SSH. You can see that's version 0.7 at the moment. And what happens is you just type in, um, you go into the command palette. Is it uh, command shift P, something like that? Yep. And then, yes, you, you type in SSH and it'll find the uh, remote SSH connection. You just say add a new SSH host. And it's just like being on a command line then and connecting to your Raspberry Pi, but Visual Studio behind the scenes connects to the Raspberry Pi and then you can run code from your um, your Mac PC Linux machine and have it execute on the robot itself. So that's really cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to reconnect because I think on that, oh, there, there we go. It's fine. And I'm already in the Trilobot um, folder. So I've gone onto the, the website, um, which I showed earlier. So github.com slash pymeroni slash trilobot dash python. I've cloned that code using the git clone and then that address I've just said. So it's um, github.com slash pymeroni pirate robot monkey ninja. And then it's uh, trilobot dash python. So if you clone that, it will download a folder that's called trilobot python. And within there, there is a folder that's called examples. And that's the folder that I'm actually in now. So we can see there we've got avoid walls, calibrate servo, and so on. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to run the show under lighting. So if I just do Python, let's just move that out of the way a second. Python show under lighting. And you can see there now um, that it's doing various different things with its LEDs. If I just flip that over for a second, you can see there... Um, it's just changing the LEDs um, and it's saying various things on there. It looks like it's doing the exact same. I'll just run that again. So it says separate red, green and blue. So it's the exact same pattern it's showing, but in the code, it's doing it in a different way. So you can either provide a, a word like green. You can provide a hex value, you know, like FF, 00, FF, that kind of thing. Or you can provide the hue, saturation and value of each of them as well. Let's just flip that over there. So that's the, the first one. Let's have a look what else we've got. So let's run, I like the distance one. Let's try the uh, distance lights. Right, so currently that's so in sort of a green color. I'm gonna put my hand, let me see if I, if I do it like this, maybe you can see it better. So if I move my hand towards it, the closer my hand gets, the redder the lights get. You see that? And then as I move it away, it goes back from yellow back to green again, depending on what is in front of it. I move it somewhere like that and I do that again. There we go. And you can see there it's displaying on the, the little terminal the actual distance in centimeters, which is pretty accurate. It's pretty cool. So when I get to about one, it's definitely red. About 15, 20 onwards, it's getting yellow and green. And we can flip that over and see what that looks like as well. So as I move my hands there, the LEDs change their value. Pretty cool. I like that. Okay, let's try. It. Oops, let's try another one. Let's just Control C to stop that, and let's have a look what else we've got. We can run. So under light chasers. Let's try that one. So Python, and if I type uh, under, and then under chaser. There we go. And then that's that's the one I had at the very start of the show. Looks like a, a Knight Rider thing. And if I flip that over, you can see what it's doing. It's just kind of making the lights bounce around. Which is pretty cool. And it'll keep doing that until you control C out of it. Let's have a look what else we've got. We've got a fade chaser. So let's try that one. So I go back to there and do fade chaser. So these are similar to the last chaser, but the LEDs are sort of fading in and out. You can see there. That's pretty cool. 
Okay, let's try another one. Uh, let's try underlight groups. Underlighting groups. So you can see there, there's the green and red. There's the middle, front, middle, rear. Diagonals. And what else have we got? Front, middle and rear. Okay, let me just... I think I can hear people coming into our uh, Discord. Yes, I can. I'm just going to mute that for a second. There we go. And then it's 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 finished. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of other pieces. I'll move the robot around in a second, but I've got a really small desk here, so it might just run right off the end of the desk. So let's try... Um, let's try avoid walls. Maybe movements. Let's try movements. Python movements. There we go. It's really smooth sounding as well. There we go. Let's try that again. I'm going to put it right over there. So it's got the uh, biggest amount of space to be able to run. Let's try that again. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully you saw some of that. Let's put up, let's have a look what else we've got. And we'll have a look at some of the code as well very briefly in a second. So reactive button LEDs. Let's try that. So Python and reactive buttons. Reactive buttons. Right. So if I press that button there, A pressed, B pressed. I'll just turn it around so I can get through the ones. Y pressed, X pressed, and as I'm pressing it, the LED next to it flashes as well. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So that's pretty cool. So let's have a look at that code itself. So we've got Visual Studio open here. Um, if I just close that terminal window down there, and let's open up one of those examples. So let me just go to the code, go to the examples, and let's have a look at that, that button one we just looked at, reactive buttons. Okay, so um, shall we go full screen on this, like so, and then let's zoom in a little bit so we can see the code. That's better. Right, and I'll just close that window there. So yeah, this is running on Python 3. We're importing the time because we're going to do some time related, probably sleep. Uh, and then from Trilobot, import star. Trilobot is the library that that you install when you download the uh, the code. I think there's like an install shell script that you just run. So it says on here, it shows you how to use the buttons to make their neighbor LEDs fade up and fade down when released. Press Control C to exit. Uh, and it says print Trilobot example reactive button LEDs. Um, the next thing it does is we define a variable that's called a tbot and that's of type Trilobot which then becomes the, the robot itself. And then we set A, B, C, sorry, A, B, X, and Y to zero. So they're going to be our buttons. And while true, so we've just got this loop here. If tbot read button A, then print A pressed. And then A equals, and then they've got this minimum value, A plus 0 0.01 to 1. So otherwise, if A equals the maximum, you know, which is the maximum value of those, those and we're just using that minus um, minus 0.1, I think, just to trim off any of the values in there that are in there. Um, I would have thought these would be, um, I'm just having a look there, A equals the minimum of A plus. So they're probably using that to debounce the button. Um, because one of the problems when you press a button and you're reading that constantly, you'll just get loads of messages coming down. So you can sometimes do things like trim it or debounce it. So then they say tbot set button LED. And because we read in button A, they're going to set the button A LED um, with the value of A. So what this is doing here is just basically adding to um, the, the value of A. All right, that's a really bad piece of code they've done there. Right, what they're essentially doing, let me if I just add to this, is saying A equals A plus, and then a value like plus 0 0.1. So it fades it up over time as it keeps going around as you hold the button down. Um, and the minimum and maximum thing are just a way of um, capping the value so it doesn't go higher than one or lower than zero, that kind of thing. 
Mm. That's that's what they've done there, I suspect. So they've got that for all the buttons, A, B, X, and Y. And then at the very bottom, they've just got a sleep for um, a tenth of a second, just so that it doesn't go and just make the uh, thing read too many times. So having a sleep just sort of throttles that back a bit. But conceptually, only a couple of lines of code, like less than 50 lines of code, quite a bit if it's just text uh, comments. So that's pretty good. Um, and let's have a look um, at some of the other examples that we've got in here. So remote control, I was interested to understand how that works. So they brought in this controller mappings. Let's read this uh, bit of text they've got on here. So this means that we can use our Xbox or um, PS5 controller uh, to control the robot. So an advanced example of how Trilobot can be remotely controlled using controller or gamepad. This will require one supported controller to be already paired with your Trilobot. So I'm interested to know how you do pair it. Um, I've not seen that code yet, but there is quite a lot of documentation on here and they are changing this as we go as well. They're improving it. So at the startup, list of controllers will be shown um, with you asked to select which one. The program will then attempt to connect to the controller. If it's successful, Trialbot's underlights will illuminate with a rainbow pattern. That's cool. I do like the LEDs for feedback. Uh, from there, you can drive your Trialbot using left um, analog D, uh, left analog stick or D-pad. Pressing the right trigger will switch to tank steer mode, where left analog stick will control the left wheels and the right will control the right wheels. Pressing the left trigger will switch back to regular mode. That's cool. Um, if it comes disconnected, it'll stop moving and show a red pulsing animation underneath. That's pretty cool as well. And then there's the code for doing that. So they just got a red, green and blue, which I guess is just the to represent the uh, LEDs in a bit. Again, they use T-Bot as a Trilobot trial class. They then get the controller variable using the controller mappings, choose controller, and then they connect to it. And then they've, they've got a little bit of an animation here. So for LED in the range of the number of underlights, so I think the six underlights, it'll basically just do that six times. Um, T-Bot clear under lighting. So after it's done its animation, it'll stop that and clear it. They've got H and V, which I think is like horizontal and vertical. Spacing is one divided by the number of underlights. Not sure what that's all about yet. And then tank steer is false. And then while true, if the controller is connected, then reconnect. Fair enough. If it if it can't reconnect, then you're basically just saying update it. Otherwise, just say there is a, a problem. Disconnect, disable the motors. If it is connected, then let's try reading the buttons left one, right one. Um, so if you do left one and it's in tank steer, tank steer equals false. If we do right one and not tank steer, then tank steer equals true. Otherwise, just say left or right on this controller cannot find them. Tank steer not available. And so on and so on. So this is a bit more involved, this code. I was interested to know what all this was about here. Got some interesting maths with a bit of sin. Not sure what all that is about. I'd have to have a look at that. But yeah, they've got a bit of pie going on there. I think it's probably to do with the fact it's sweeping round in an arc and they want to make it look like a circle. That would be my guess. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't have um, a Bluetooth um, Xbox controller. Um, I think he asked that there's a couple of different types of Xbox controller, if I remember. There was really, really early ones on the very first Xbox ones. And then I think the later ones did have this Bluetooth option. So um, I'm, I would have to look into that, but I don't think every single controller works. But I think the PlayStation 4 and 5 ones do. So this comes to the part of the show where we're going to say goodbye to the people who are watching on replay. And I hope you really enjoyed the show so far. And we're going to carry on now for the people who are watching live with a bit of Q&A so we can uh, have a chat. So I'm interested to know if any of you have uh, joined the Discord yet. So five people on YouTube who are watching this in replay. And uh, let's have a chat, shall we, for everybody else who's here. 